Okay, we're going to go over a few things today to add to what we know about Excel. First of all, we are going to do what's called the wrap text. If you have something in a cell that's way too long, like Valley City High School, what you can do is click on the cell, go to your alignment, and go way to the bottom where it says wrap text. And you can wrap the text within the cell. So again, if I would make this cell a little bit bigger, you can see how it is going to stay in that one cell. And then you can do whatever you want with it. But that's the wrap text feature. It'll wrap all your text within the cell that you're working with. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, the next thing is the select all button. Say that you want to select the entire spreadsheet and you want to change the font. What you need to do is use this little triangle button. If I click on that, it's going to select all of my information on my spreadsheet. And then I could go through and if I wanted to change the font, I could change the font to something else. Um, not really sure if I like that one, but I'll stick with this one. But that is your select all button. Another way is to insert rows and again I can click on the row I can usually choose insert from the the options that are up here but if for some reason those options do not show up what I can also do is go up into this button here and you can see how I can insert rows I can delete rows and I can do a number of different options if I want so if I insert a row here you will see that it shows up just like the other option. So again, it's just the button up here in case it doesn't show up with the pop-up. Also, with our cells, just like what we did with our tables, I can select cells A1 through F1, and that would be the entire width of my, of my table here. And you can see I can choose my alignment and down here is a merge and center option. And so it'll take all those cells and merge them. Again, if I don't want them merged, I just come down to my alignment, take the check mark off, and they are separated again. I'm gonna leave them merged for now. Next is a formula, a new formula that we're going to use I'm going to go down to cell A11 and type highest score. And then down here, I'm going to put lowest. And in reality, we could go through and we could uh, just look and find the highest score. But if we change the data in our spreadsheet, we want this to update also. So I'm going to select cell C11, and I'm going to come up with a formula. If I go in here, and I'm not really sure which it is, but what you need to do is the highest would be the maximum. So we're going to start with MA, and you can see where it says max. We're going to choose max, and then we're going to choose the range of our cells which are those cells right there, that we want to find the highest number is the max or the maximum. Once we hit enter, we will see that 611 is up there. And you can see I made a mistake there and I shouldn't have put the totals in there. So again, it's really easy to fix. I'm going to go up into my cell. It's the wrong formula. And I'm going to use this blue circle. And I'm just going to move it over. Now that is the correct range of cells. Okay, it was good to make the mistake so I could show you how to do that. So the highest is a 213. If I were to change the Barney score of 213 to 113, and hit enter, you will see that the new highest score now is the 200. So it's going to look through all those scale cells and find the highest score. You can also do the same thing with your lowest. I'm going to go down there 
the lowest, if the, the highest is the max, the lowest is the minimum. So we will choose MI, and you can see how minimum shows up. And again, we're going to pick that range of cells, same range of cells, hit return, and we will find that the lowest number in that range of cells is 78. So we can go back up to Wilma and type in 110, and you will see now that lowest score is going to, is going to change to 89. So again, the maximum is for the highest, minimum is for the lowest. Something else you'll have to do is insert clip art. So again, we can go to our website, go to Google, Google Images, type in bowling, find some images. I want some clip art images here. And again, we want to avoid the, the ones with the checkerboard background. Sometimes if you click on the transparent option, you can find some bowling clip art that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hold my finger down it. I can hit it, add to photos, or I could hit copy. Again, go back into my spreadsheet and paste. And there is my bowling. All right, now you should be able to complete project three in your modules.